even though they know that methadone is addictive, they still use it? Sure do. And they use other drugs, too. Um, great show. I, I, your screener said not to tell you how good you are. And your books are great. I've read uh, Ground Zero, so I don't want any of your books. And I've read some of your mystery books. You do a terrific job. Keep it up. You see, when I get a call like this, it makes my day. i got to tell you the truth. Not just It's not just an average guy telling me that, which would be great. This is a person who's a realist who deals with trauma every day of his life, who knows, you know, black from white, in other words. The guy lives in a black and white movie, incidentally. Any any trauma physician is a black living in a black and white movie. There's no color in his life. I appreciate that call. I thought about that. Lately, I've been living in a black and white film. I don't mind the film noir life. I've always found it rather romantic. But every once in a while, I wouldn't mind a little, uh, you know, a little bit of the rainbow to re-enter my existence. Something is so bad in this country right now. You know, I'm a guy, you know that. And if you've listened to me for years, you know, many of you relate to me almost like a friend. And I want to go into a big, you know, a personal thing here. But I think light has gone out of the nation. Joy has gone out of the nation. And there's very little joy and light. The rainbow is shriveling up to some, some monochromes here. Very few, little color left in the country. What do you think is doing it? Let's don't, don't call and say it's Obama. It's a given he's a vampire and has sucked a pint of blood out of the Constitution as often as he can. But he's not the only reason. I think that the terrorism is finally getting to us. People are running scared. They're afraid not only of the Muslim immigrants, to be very clear, and that's why, oh, that is why I almost said, oh, Trump. That's why oh, Trump is doing so well. I meant old Trump, but I almost said, oh, Trump. Trump said, no more Muslim immigrants till we can figure out what's going on. What is wrong with that idea? Tell me what's wrong with that idea. We know amongst them, amongst all the jelly beans, if it's one out of 100, one of them is going to be a suicide bomber or a terrorist. So you stop the whole importation of all the jelly beans. Until you can stop this. Period. Why, we need the immigrants? What do we need them for? Put aside Muslim. Put aside anyone's religion or race. I want to know what we need immigrants for right now. You don't. Zuckerberg does, so he can have even more billions of dollars at the end of the year. Every one of them who have, has pushed the H-1B visa thing, Bill Gates, I don't know their names. All of them that run these huge companies in Silicon Valley and the other Tech companies, there's American workers. They want to cut their wages. So they want them to come in from India. Why? Wages. But we don't really need immigrants. We don't need them. We could create a job training program for high school kids, take them right out of high school, right into job training, create technology institutes, and put the kids right in there and make our tech workers the number one tech workers in the world again. Why are we bringing them in from India? Answer, because the pigs that run these companies are so greedy you can't even imagine. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Well, that's the world we live in. But uh, the fact of the matter is, the drug culture is very much with us. It's not an issue for the politicians, but it's an issue for the mothers. The fathers, the e, e you know, the emergency room people, the social workers, the priests. It's an issue for all of America. We never hear a word about it. Whatever happened to the drug problem? Well, we have a drug problem, don't we? But no one's talking about it. They talk about well, other important topics, terrorism, Immigration, the economy, every minute now about China, China, China. Watch what happens tomorrow. A little, I'll, I'll give you a guess, a 60-40. The stock market booms when the big money takes the profit if they get the little guy bails out on his stock. They got everyone to sell Apple at 100. They'll come in and buy it tomorrow. Watch the stock go up tomorrow. Watch. Uh, we'll get to the news in a minute. It's hour three, format changes, but we're going to talk about the news of the day, certainly. The collapsing stock market, and I'm I'm guessing tomorrow it, it rebounds and the big money makes money back. They got all the little guys to bail. And then I started talking about drug addiction because I saw a show last night on HBO on heroin addiction on 
uh, in Massachusetts and Cape Cod. And, you know, I had no sympathy for the junkies. I'm sick and tired of these shows like Intervention. I was talking about that, and we're talking about drug addiction. A doctor called at the end of the last hour who treats drug addicts, and he said there's only one thing that stops people from using drugs, heroin, that is. And he said the loss of a wife. What else did he say? Does anyone remember the loss of a wife? Robert, I don't remember all of it, but it was, oh, going to jail, losing a wife or seeing their grandchildren. Other than that, there's nothing will stop the heroin use, you know. And we talked about uh, Big Pharma being involved in the drug industry by producing oxycodone. I mean, you want to talk about a constructive step? Stop the production of oxycodone, one of the most dangerous drugs ever, ever developed. It wasn't done demonically. It was done to stop pain. But if the addictive qualities of the drug is so great that it's causing an epidemic, a government steps in and stops the production of such a drug. But now enter the lobbyists for the pharmaceutical companies. They buy dinners. They take them on vacations. The next thing you know, there's no talk about stopping the production of oxycodone. Instead, the quislings in the Senate, I can name them, uh, are talking about banning soda, banning sugar, banning caffeine. But God forbid they should talk about the drug epidemic. Now you know how things work in Washington and why America has so little faith in, in government. And then I got to some, I don't know whether it was me, I said, it feels like the light's gone out in America. And I didn't know exactly where to put my finger on it, you know, how. I didn't know if it's me personally, uh, but I felt like the whole world's become black and white. There's very little color. There's no joie de vivre left in America, to use the French phrase of joy of living. Very little of it. It's not in the airwaves. It's nowhere to be found. I don't mean the manufactured, you know, music stuff or the fake stuff that you see in the newspapers. In general, I don't see the joie de vivre, left, much of it left in the country. So I'm asking myself what's going on. I think people are terrified of the Muslim invasion. I mean, very bluntly, the terrorism, the Muslim invasion, the open borders from Mexico, the, the economy being shaky, a liar in the White House that fakes everything he does. You think it has no effect on people? It does. What do you think is causing this feeling of... I don't know a loss of color in America, so to speak, to put it that way, or the drug topic. Now, here's a new a new topic that just came up a minute ago. I have to laugh because I made a show about this a month ago. U.S. recruits tech leaders to help disrupt Islamic State group. The White House is dispatching top national security officials to Silicon Valley, not for breast implants, but to seek the tech industry's help in disrupting the Islamic State group and other extremists. How hard is it for them to say, cut Twitter off in Afghanistan? What do they have to seek the tech industry's help? Tell that pimply-faced owner of Facebook, just turn it off in Syria. But no, we didn't have to go there and have a visit now, a lunch and a visit and a walk and a this and a that and a dinner and a this and a fly in the airplane and a comeback and nothing will happen. At a high-level session, leaders from major tech, blah, 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 internet coming, discuss ways to use technology to stop terrorists from radicalizing people online. How hard is that to do? You turn off Twitter, you turn off Facebook in these countries where there is a hot, which are hotbeds of terrorism, and that's the end of it. Oh, no, no, I have to discuss it now and have a meeting on it. Let's take some callers. KSFO, Mike, welcome. What's the topic? Go ahead, please. Hey, uh, thanks for taking the call. Hey, listen, so I think Americans feel sad or somber. Like, I think the big picture actually relates back to liberalism uh, and its tie into the self-esteem movement. Does that, does that resonate with you? I don't know. What, what do you mean, the self-esteem movement? How's that, how's that affecting the sadness in America? In like the, the 60s, 70s, you know, and it's part of like this progressive plank, the social, you know, social progress. You raise your kids up, and you say, "Oh, you know, you're special. You're, you're, you know, you're high IQ. You're gifted. You know, you're going to be great one day." And then it's exacerbated by the divorce rate. So then you got one parent saying the kid's great, giving them gifts. You know, more gifts from the other parent, and it's just this big mix of great. You know, this kid thinks, grows up thinking he's great, right? And then he gets to adulthood, and he realizes maybe he's just a schlub. You know, that doesn't have that much going on. And <laughs> oh, no, that, that's quite, look, every little boy wants to be uh, a famous sports figure. At least when I was a kid, they, I wanted to be, you know, big things. And it took me many years to find out what I could do and what I couldn't do. 
And luckily, I've achieved a certain level of, let us say, achievement. But, you know, for most of us, there's no real achievement in life, and you have to learn to live as a regular person. So what you're saying is most people who are raised to believe they're special, who are not uh, special, get depressed? I think in the West. I think, I don't know about Europe and Canada, but certainly America. I mean, I was raised that way to a degree, but that doesn't mean you're coddled every second. It could also come with bouts of, of varied forms of child abuse. So, it's you know, it's a... Uh, it's a real well, I, I'm lucky because my father taught me. My, I'm very lucky because I expected to be nothing. My father taught me I was worthless and no good. So as a result, anything beyond that was a gift. So I'm very happy with what I have because I was always feeling I'm going to never have anything. I was raised the old European way. Abuse, uh, mental abuse, derision, anger. It worked for me, though. I think that's the Asian way, too. I think that may be the human way. I think it may, I haven't researched it, but I think that may be a human thing, not to justify child abuse. but, but uh, It wasn't child abuse, but it would be considered abusive today. But you're raising a very interesting point. Asian, the, what do they call it, the tiger mother? How does she raise a child to do so well? By putting the child down, calling them a moron, telling them to do better. They come home with a, with a 95, she screams at them, why didn't you get 100? See, the American mother doesn't even want the kid to take homework because it may affect their self-esteem. Isn't that what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everybody gets a trophy. And, you know, there's even this, you know, this... <laughs> I love that. Even the kid, who's, even the kid who drops the ball give, is given an award, a, a gold statue. <laughs> uh, All right, my uh, friend, I'm sending you a gift called Government Zero. You talk about the biggest zero on the planet. You can find them readily enough <laughs> in the government. So I don't want to go into this whole issue of the self-esteem, although it's an interesting issue. I want to talk about the drug epidemic and why politicians are not talking about it. And I would like to talk about the light in the country. Am I, am I projecting? This is what I want to know. I'm going to use this, this show as a Rorschach test. Is it me or is it the country? Am I in touch with the country? Do I sense that people are more... I don't want to use the word, uh, the wrong word. I would say that there's less joy. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, that's how I want to put it. I don't want to say depressed. That's a whole different story. That borders already on the medical. I'm saying that there's a general joy that was r r somehow in America you could feel it in the streets. I don't see it anymore. I don't feel it anymore. Now, is it me is what I want to know. I'm actually putting myself out on the psychiatric couch. For all of America who listens to me, and it's not a, not a huge audience, but whatever it is, are you feeling the same thing? Do you feel that the light has gone out in America or is going out in this country? Tell me. I want to know. I, I'm not making this up for fun. I really like to know. I'll be back to here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. If you're not feeling the geopolitical situation in the Middle East, if you're not feeling the importation of terrorism, if you're not feeling the vacuity of the political class, etc. You know, maybe there's something wrong with you, but I'm saying, from my point of view, although I've carried political issues on my back my whole career in radio, I mean, we do this for a living, we're not complaining about it, no one's forcing us to do it. If the burden becomes too great or whatever, we quit. And that's it, no one hears from us again. There were some great people in radio who I know of, when I first started, who actually walked off the air and were never heard from again. I'm not gonna name names. I didn't like the guy, but he was a great broadcaster. A local guy. A real nasty piece of work, by the way. He left to feed squirrels in the, in the East Coast. And no one could ever make him come back. And they offered him a lot of, you know, rewards. He wouldn't do it. He had had enough of carrying the burden of the world. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm used to it. But what I'm saying is I feel the world's becoming a darker place. And I want to know if you are. Is the light going out in this world? Or am I just projecting my view from a personal point of view, onto, onto, the, onto my audience. It's a, it's a strange question. But is the light going out or not? Or am I the only one feeling it? Or is it real or am I imagining it for personal reasons? I, I, I mean, what's, the real, what's really going on here? Then we talked about drug addiction, heroin addiction, marijuana addiction, alcohol addiction. 
how the medical establishment is in cahoots with the treatment establishment, which is in cahoots with the 